All right, guys, it's me, Echo Craft. So, I know I said that uh, I wasn't going to buy any more gear, but um, I did sell my ARP 2600 or the BARP 2600 on uh, Sweetwater uh, Gear Exchange. And, you know, I got, I got some decent money for it. Um, so I decided, uh, like I always do when I do sell a piece of gear, I never, um, I never just spend the money on anything else or put the money away. I just end up buying another piece of gear. And as you can see on the screen, I have the Behringer cat. Well, that's actually a picture of it. I did do a cherry audio demo of the cat. Uh, which I liked very much. Um, I actually might do a comparison demo um, of both units. So I do have the hardware unit, uh, but I'm just showing you this picture of it. Um, and uh, I decided to buy it. Um, and I also have the Behringer Wasp coming as well. And I'll probably be doing an unboxing video on that as well. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the boxing video, shall we? We All right, so here we go with the unboxing. Um, let's get a little bit of light in here. And yeah, so I sold my BARP, that was the Behringer or Behringer ARP 2600, and on Sweetwater Gear Exchange, which I have to tell you, um, Sweetwater Gear Exchange is very cool, and uh, yeah, I uh, was very happy with the results. Um, the person I sold it to was very happy with the results of buying it. So instead of cashing it in, I decided to uh, buy another Behringer piece of equipment. Here we go from Sweetwater. Because I had it go right to a gift card. Oh, Sweetwater candy. Woohoo! And um, so I decided to buy. Let me move this stuff out of my way. This little guy right here, the Behringer Octave Cat, which is a legendary synthesizer. Um, and uh, Behringer cloned it or whatever they call it. I don't know, they they re, they redid it. So they did it their way, I guess. And it's, it's from what I understand, it's just like the uh, original Octave Cat minus the keys. So this is it, this is the Behringer Cat. Um, and it's a, a, a do for it says right here, legendary duophonic analog synthesizer with dual VCOs, four mixable waveforms, external signal processor, 16 voice polychain and Euro rack format. Boom. All right. So, you know, I did say in the other video that I wasn't going to buy any more gear and I wasn't going to do any more unboxing videos, but I have to tell you. Usually when I sell a piece of equipment, I buy another piece of equipment. So I don't cash the money in. Let's see what we got here. So we have the quick start guide, power supply. And yes, it is a, it is a United States power supply. That's a good thing. All right. I've seen a lot of videos on this. Um, I've always, you know, I remember the cat back in the day when it first came out, the Octave Cat. And uh, I always wanted one. And again, what I love about what Behringer does is they recreate these synthesizers of yesteryear. And um, this was uh, $199 on Sweetwater. Um, yeah, which is crazy. Uh, Back in the day, here we go with me unpacking stuff again because I'm horrible at it. Let's zoom in a little bit there. Um, but I am horrible at this. 
Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, synthesizers back in the day were very expensive, uh, you know, and they really were. I mean, you had big companies out there like Moog and um, ARP and Oberheim, you know, and they and they and they, to this day those those synthesizers are still very expensive and. I've owned Moog products. Um, those of you who have uh, seen or uh, follow Synth Samurai, um, he's always updating everybody on the Moog progress of what's going on with Moog. Look at that. That's that's a really nice little synth. Oh, and the knobs feel nice. Switches feel good. Faders feel good. All right. It's got some half to weight to it. Um, power button. Yeah. Um, so this is the cat, uh, by Behringer and I really like this. I think it's very nice. It's got wooden sides, which is pretty cool and, uh, a little wobbly. I know somebody said that before the, the feet that they put on this thing is kind of wobbly, but I can fix that. So yeah, so we're going to do a demo on this, um, and just pull back a little bit. We're gonna do a demo on this uh, little synthesizer here. Uh, we've got USB, we've got MIDI in, MIDI through. We've got small patch bay over here, um, which is kind of interesting. We've got some outs. Uh, we have our main volume. Yeah, and on the back, we have little dip switches to choose your MIDI channel. And then we have uh, main output, we have high and low, we have power, and then we have the power supply uh, input. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, I like the format. It reminds me of the Moog uh, Mother 32 and DFAM format, uh, which I sold. Uh, again, I got rid of my Moog stuff because I've had trouble with Moog stuff. Um, granted that they're... Um, they're uh, Tech support is phenomenal, um, great guys to work with, but I just don't understand the whole thing behind Moog being so expensive <clears throat> and not reliable. So yeah, enough of that. Anyway, getting back to the cat here, this is a very cool little synthesizer. I'm very, uh, very blown away by this and I couldn't believe the price. I also have coming the Wasp, so you can definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is the Octave Cat by Behringer. So let's get to the demo. Cool beans.
holy cat. I'm, <laughs> I know that was pun. That was a pun. I know it was punny. I'm trying to be punny. Um, I'm blown away. Uh, I got some great sounds out of this thing and there's still more to come. This, what I love about this synthesizer, like most old school analog synthesizers is that there is no presets. And I got to tell you, and I, I like presets. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with using presets, but this, just the things that I created near the end of the video just blew me away. Unbelievable. Um, I'm highly allergic to cats, but this one I think I'm going to be okay with. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but this is a really cool synthesizer, and I can't wait to implement it with all my other stuff. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on the the Wasp as well. I played a ba I, I played a Wasp back in '91. I was at a synth museum, and I played an Op 2600. I played a Wasp. Um, they didn't have a cat there, or maybe he did. I don't know. He had lots of cats though. Let me tell you this guy, unfortunately he passed away and they closed the synth museum down. It was in a house and it was really kind of gross. Um, <laughs> he was a nice guy, but there was like Kleenexes all over the floor and there were cats everywhere and cat hair. And, uh, I took a shower when I got home. Let's just say that it was nasty, but it was a lot of fun because, I had never seen that many analog synths in my life. And the list goes on there. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what they did uh, with the synthesizers after he passed away, unfortunately. Um, but it was an experience. Oh, and he made us take him to McDonald's before he let us in. And it was by appointment only. He had We had to buy him McDonald's. Um, Happy Meal or something. I forget what it was. But anyway... Um, yeah, I forget what his name was too. Nice guy, but just really gross, uh, not kept well. And unfortunately, there was a lot of cat hair on a lot of the synthesizers, um, but it was unbelievable. But that's where I played the Wasp for the first time, um, and it was amazing. And I always wanted one of those as well, but couldn't get my hands on one as usual because um, they stopped making them. And also, they were extremely rare and extremely expensive. So I got to hand it to Behringer. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Behringer, but I don't care. I really don't care what you think. They make cool stuff. This synthesizer is ridiculous. Um, it's just ridiculous. It, it sounds amazing. It's very interesting because it's not laid out like a normal synth, and it has weird quirkiness to it, which I like. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I can't wait till I get the wasp. I know it's coming this week and I'm going to put the two together. I know one of the cool things about the wasp too, is it allows you to put in an audio input and use the filters on that. So I'm actually going to put the cat through that. I'm going to put the edge through it. I'm going to try some different things and see uh, what happens. Um, but I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to go back to that's over here. Is it right there? Yeah. I'm going to start playing with this thing some more because it's a lot of fun um so yeah uh like i always say stay frosty stay creative and uh get one of these things will you buy it it's cheap good stuff cheap um yeah all right peace <laughs>